As is off the case, I was raised in a church-going family by parents who were raised in the church themselves. Our lives and our friends were the result of our church affiliation. Family activities frequently revolved around church events, and it defined the kind of people we were. It felt comfortable growing up there because we knew everybody and belonged to a large body of like-minded people. I went to Bible camp, was active in youth group, helped with Bible school, even served as a counselor at Bible camp. I made a public profession of faith, which in my denomination was the equivalent of proclaiming your faith in Christ, when I was in high school, mostly because it was expected, but there was also a part of me that believed it was something I needed to do. I had the head knowledge of what it meant to be saved, but not the desire to surrender my life or to follow Jesus no matter the cost. I did not fully understand what it meant to be a Christian. I thought it was a decision that I made to adhere to a belief system, and it was my responsibility to live an upright life after that. Maybe that is something that we all foolishly believe before we know the truth. I was also resistant, resistant to surrendering my life to the Lord. To me, that meant I would have to give up my own desires, which at the time I didn't recognize was sin in my life, and resign myself to being what I thought of as God's puppet. Little did I know at that time that surrendering to God didn't mean having to give up my own desires, but choosing to set them aside and choosing to follow God's will and not my own. There were many hard moments in my life. Each one made me analyze what I'd done wrong or why this particular thing was happening to me. At times, I remember asking God to save me, but there was never, never a cataclysmic, cataclysmic moment when I knew that I had been saved or that my life had changed. It was like a vaccination that mysteriously didn't take. The only thing I can now conclude is that the Lord saw my heart and knew that I was not yet fully ready or surrendered or committed. My mom became a Christian when I was in high school. She prayed earnestly for me for years, but I pretty much went my own way and did my own thing. I believed that God was real and I cried out to him when times got tough, but I just didn't seem to fit the Christian mold or maybe the mold that I thought was a Christian. In the fall of 2005, freshly back from helping people impacted by Hurricane Katrina, I became embroiled in some family disagreements. The words spoken were harsh and cruel, and what made it more unpalatable to me was that they were coming from a professed Christian, someone I had never imagined would be so brazen or unkind. I was shocked, incensed, and distraught. My spirit was in full crisis mode, trying to cope with the pain. Driving home that evening, I cried out to God. He was the only place I could turn, the only hope I had for comfort or peace. I was ready to admit that I couldn't weather life on my own and to ask him to take control. That night, God showed me irresistible grace and began a new work in me. As a new Christian, I was still to face many fiery tests and trials. I wish I had known then that God would allow my faith to be tested to determine if I was going to trust him. I don't fully understand all of God's purposes in life's difficulties, but I have the assurance that I am never on my own and he will never leave me or forsake me. I know that I belong to Christ. His blood was shed for me and heaven is going to be my eternal home.